Welcome to the show. I'm Ollie Double. Stand-up comedy is more theatrical than most theatre, and funnier too. Fact! The first thing to say is that stand-up comedy easily passes what I call the Peter Brook test. In 1968, the great theatre director Peter Brook published this book, The Empty Space, and in it he gives a profoundly simple definition of what theatre is. He says, I can take any empty space and call it a bare stage. A man walks across this empty space while someone else is watching him, and this is all that is needed for an act of theatre to be engaged. I mean, stand-up comedy does way more than that, although it wouldn't be much of a show if that's all it did. <laughs> Stand-up's so much better than that. And in fact, I'm going to name six ways in which stand-up comedians outstrip conventional actors. One, authorship. Hello, I'm an actor, and I write all my own material. Here's the thing I'm working on at the moment. I call it King Lear. The point is that whereas most actors just interpret other people's material, most comedians generate their own. I mean, it's true there are exceptions. Shakespeare was an actor, for example, and some comedians work with writers, but the fact is that rule is mostly true. Also, the scripts that comedians produce are really different from a playtext. With a playtext, you can kind of work out who the characters are, what the plot is, and so on. Whereas a uh, stand-up script is very, very different. So Josie Long is a young British comedian who broke through in the early 2000s with a delightful, whimsical, homemade style really rooted in DIY culture and left-wing politics. Now, what you're looking at now is the script, essentially, for her show Romance and Adventure. And if you look at it, it's kind of hard to make sense of it. There's just these words everywhere. It's a spider diagram with things like Lanark um, and phrases like 2012 till 2015, Spice Girls, Branson plus Ramjack, Tesco, I'm a hypocrite, Dalston, Champagne Water Ski. What do these things mean? I don't know, not really, and I saw the show. The only person who would know is Josie Long, and she might not even remember all of it now. She would have done when she did the show, and that's the point. The script comes from the comedian. Two, acting. Normally, actors play one character, but comedians play many because they people the stage with their imagination, creating characters, set, props, humans, animals, from the air all around them, using just their body, their face, and their voice. The example I'm going to give of this is Richard Pryor, widely acknowledged as one of the all-time greats of stand-up. He started out in America in the 1960s with quite a clean-cut style, but then he radically reinvented himself in the 1970s uh, with a much blacker, more earthy style, sharing the private humour of the African-American community with mixed-race audiences. His show, Live in Concert, is amazing. It was filmed in late 1978 and released to cinemas in 1979. And it contains a scene in which he shows you what happens when hunters go out into the woods. I'll show you what it's like. It's kind of like this. You can see it so vividly and you can hear the crunching of leaves. And then he shows us a deer drinking and being surprised by the sound of the leaves crunching. And it's amazing because you kind of see him there. It's clearly just Richard Pryor and he's barely doing anything. He's just standing with quite a still body and quite a still face. But at the same time, you can actually see the deer so vividly that it gets gales of laughter. It's incredible. Three, audience. You, you gave a right good full sucking. <laughs> What's that idiot saying over there? Charming. Stand-up is more theatrical than theatre because there's never a fourth wall separating performer from audience. Sarah Millican is a brilliant comedian from the northeast of England. She has a very distinctive voice. Uh, it's high-pitched. It has a strong Geordie accent. And her style, I would describe it as warm, confessional, and let's be honest, rude. One of the things she does is ask audiences about their experiences. So she might ask them, for example, have you ever broken anything during sex? And they come back with these amazing stories about stuff they've broken, like, for example, a lamp, a bed, 
a dessert table in a restaurant. And of course, she's very funny, reacting to these, very quick on her feet, very quick-witted. But also she builds the routine night after night, audience after audience, because as well as finishing up with a story of her own, she'll incorporate uh, the reactions of previous night's audiences in the current performance. It, it's a very beautiful and liberating thing to see people confessing to such intimate things in public like that. Four, persona. In stand-up comedy, there's an inherent ambiguity about who that person is that you see on stage. It's different with acting, isn't it? Because you know there's a difference between actor and character. If you see Hamlet on the stage, you know he's not really Hamlet. You know he's really David Tennant because you've seen him on Doctor Who on telly, right? But with stand-up, it's persona. It's sort of an exaggerated version of the of the real person or something like that. We don't know how much that person we see on stage would resemble the person if we met them privately in everyday life. And that could be played with in a really interesting way. So take the British comedian Bridget Christie, for example. She used to work for the Daily Mail before she started in stand-up in 2004 with a delightfully silly style, which saw her do two Edinburgh comedy shows dressed as Charles II. Then she changed her style a bit more recently so that she was not only delightfully silly, but also righteously feminist and won the Edinburgh Comedy Award in 2013 for her show A Bick For Her. Okay, so she really interestingly plays on this thing of who she is. So, for example, after a rant, she'll go, here, I'm not a character comedian, you know. I'm not a spoof of a 1980s feminist comedian. I'm like this all the time. And by playing on that ambiguity, it opens up a space for her to say some really important things. Fun extra fact. Uh, a few years ago, a well-known British newspaper published a story about Charles II on its website. And uh, they used an illustration which wasn't actually a picture of him. No, it was a photograph of Bridget Christie dressed as Charles II. And what was that newspaper? The Daily Mail. Five, truth. Actors and theatre makers often talk about truth in theatre, but actually truth is far more interesting in stand-up comedy. And that's because the show never pretends to be happening anywhere other than the stage where it's happening. And also the person that's talking to us appears to just be a person talking to us, not a character. I'd liken the difference between theatre and stand-up to the story of Zeuxis and Parasius. Yes, I'm going that pretentious. So cast your minds back to 5th century BC Athens, where there's a contest happening between two painters to prove which is the better painter. And so they meet somewhere in the open air with their paintings covered with curtains, and Zeuxis goes first. He pulls the curtain back, and uh, behind the curtain is a painting of grapes so realistic that birds fly down from the sky and try and peck the painted grapes and you think gosh he's got to win right but then it's Parasius's turn and Zeus says come on pull back the curtain and Parasius says no it's not a curtain it's my painting of a curtain and the point is there that Zeus could fool birds but Parasius could fool humans right and that's like theatre and stand-up. With theatre, you might be taken aback by how realistic the acting is, but you know it's acting. With stand-up, you're not sure what's true and what's not. And comedians can play with that in a really interesting way. So, for example, Eddie Izzard, the trans comedian from the UK who became big in the 1990s and still is very big, both in the UK and in America. Now, his 1998 show, Dressed to Kill, filmed in San Francisco, has this brilliant routine about how the singer Engelbert Humperdinck got his name. And at the end of the routine, he goes, but he's dead now. Do you hear that? Yeah, I saw it on uh, CNN just before I came out. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. And... Uh, Frank Sinatra as well, he died recently. So yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it's not true. It's not true. Yes, it is true. No, it's not. And then he goes through that cycle of claiming it to be true and not true six more times. Every time he does it, he gets another laugh because it's outrageously playing on that ambiguity of what's true and what's not. I mean, it's a bit like this right now. You know, am I actually in front of a virtual backdrop of a beach or is it really a beach? It's a beach. No, it's a backdrop. No, it's a beach. Six. Magic. So if you put all that stuff together, you realise stand-up is this incredible form. It's like magic. Stuart Lee 
started out in the British alternative comedy scene of the late 1980s before becoming a TV star in the 90s alongside Richard Herring. In the early 2000s, he gave up stand-up to return in about 2004 and become, to my mind, one of the all-time greats of the, of the form because he kept pushing at what it was possible to do with stand-up. So in a recent show, he does a joke and the audience laugh a bit, but not a massive laugh, and he tells them that they've given him the wrong reaction. He says he's been touring the show for weeks and he knows exactly the laugh that bit should get and they haven't given it to him. And he talks about the pressure that audiences put comedians under. And he said, audiences like you, you as good as murdered Robin Williams. An outrageous thing to say and it gets an outraged laugh. And then he says, he talks about real comedians that he's known who've died and, and he talks about historical examples of comedians who, who've died. And, and uh, he says that it's because of the pressure that auditors put them under. And he says that when he walks out onto the stage, he's surrounded by dead comedians, uh, people he's known. He says he walks out into a forest of ghosts. And he says the ones on this side say, don't let it get to you. Don't let it get you down. But the ones on this side say, join us, join us, join us. It's just so weird and spooky. So weird and spooky, in fact, that one comedy critic, seeing him do that, left the show to tweet that she'd just seen Stuart Lee having a nervous breakdown. I'm going to finish with this. It's a quote from Little Titch, who was a British music hall comedian in the late 19th, early 20th century. And he was so famous and successful that he gave a new word to the English language, even in his own lifetime, because the word titch, meaning somebody small, came to us from the music hall comedian Little Titch. And he was very bothered by the fact that actors get kudos much more than comedians. Uh, you know, for example, in the honours system. And he wrote, an actor is an actor, whether he plays Hamlet or wears the red nose and sloppy trousers of a vaudeville comedian. I maintain that on the score of individual ability, the variety star, in other words, the stand-up comedian, is usually the better actor of the two. I agree. Thank you very much indeed and good night.